Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this AZ500 Azure Security Engineer certification course. In this video, we're going to learn about storage security in Azure. Let's have a high level look at the things we are going to learn in this video. We will start with understanding what is data sovereignty, what is Azure storage access and how can you implement shared access signatures. Then we will learn about Azure AD storage authentication and storage service encryption as well. After that, we will learn about blob data retention policies. How can you access Azure files and what is Azure files authentication looks like and what is secure transfer required? Without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So what is data sovereignty? Data sovereignty is the concept that information which has been converted and stored in binary digital form is subject to the laws of the country or region in which it is located. Many of the current concerns that surround data sovereignty relate to enforcing privacy regulations and preventing data that is stored in a foreign country or region from being subpoenaed by the host country or region's government. In Azure, customer data might be replicated within a selected geographic area for enhanced data durability in case of a major data center disaster and in some cases will not be replicated outside of it. The first thing we need to understand is what are pair regions? Azure operates in multiple geographies around the world. An Azure geography is defined area of the world that contains at least one Azure region. An Azure region is an area within a geography containing one or more data centers. Each Azure region is paired with another region within the same geography, forming a regional pair. The exception is Brazil South, which is paired with a region outside of its geography. Across the region pairs, Azure serializes platform updates so that only one paired region is updated at a time. In the event of an outage affecting multiple regions, one region in each pair will be prioritized for recovery. So what are the benefits of Azure pair regions? Let's understand the first benefit, which is about physical isolation. When possible, Azure services prefer at least 300 miles of separation between data centers in a region pair. Physical data center separations reduces the likelihood of both regions being affected simultaneously as a result of natural disasters, civil unrest, power outages, or physical network outages. Isolation is subject to the constraint within the geography, such as geography size, power, and network infrastructure availability and regulations. The second benefit is platform provided replication. Some services such as geo redundant storage provide automatic replication to the paired region. And the third benefit is region recovery order. In the event of a broad outage, recovery of one region is prioritized out of every pair. The next benefit is sequential updates. Planned Azure system updates are rolled out to paired regions sequentially, not at the same time. This helps minimize downtime, the effect of bugs, and logical failures in the rare event of bad update. The last benefit is data residency. To meet data residency requirement for tax and law enforcement, a region resides within the same geography as its pair. All right, so let's understand Azure Storage Access. Every request made against a secured resource in the blob, file, queue, or table service must be authorized. Authorization ensures that resources in your storage account are accessible only when you want them to be and only to those users or application to whom you grant access. So what are the options? The first one is Azure AD. Azure Storage provide integration with Azure Active Directory for identity-based authorization of requests to blob and queue services. The next one is Azure Active Directory domain services or ADDS authorization. This is active for Azure files. Azure files support identity-based authorization over server message block or SMB through ADDS. 
you can use RBAC for fine-grained control over a client access to Azure file resources in a storage account. The next one is shared key. Shared key authorization relies on your account access keys and other parameters to produce an encrypted signature string that is passed on via the request in the authorization header. The fourth option is shared access signature. A shared access signature or SAS is a URI that grants restricted access rights to an Azure storage resource. And the last option is anonymous access to containers and blobs. You can enable anonymous public read access to a container and its blobs in Azure Blob Storage. By doing so, you can grant read-only access to these resources without sharing your account key and without requiring a shared access signature. Now let's understand what is shared access signature or SAS. As a best practice, you shouldn't share storage account keys with external third-party applications. If these apps need access to your data, you will need to secure their connections without using storage account keys. For untrusted clients, use a shared access signature. A shared access signature is a string that contains a security token that can be attached to a URI. Use a shared access signature to delegate access to storage objects and specify constraints such as permissions and the time range of access. So let me show you where you can find the storage access signature. I'm on my Azure portal. I'm going to go to a random storage account. I'm going to click on this storage account. Right under settings, you can click on shared access signature. So this is where you can find this shared access signature settings and options. There are three types of shared access signature you need to be aware of. Service level, account level, and user delegation SaaS. You can use service level shared access signature to allow access to specific resource in a storage account. You can use account level shared access signature to allow access to anything that a service level shared access signature can allow plus additional resources and abilities. And the third type is a user delegation SaaS. A user delegation SaaS is secured with Azure AD credentials. This type of SaaS is supported for the blob service only and can be used to grant access to containers and blobs. Now let's understand Azure AD storage authentication. In addition to shared key and shared access signature, Azure Blob and Q Storage support using Azure Active Directory to authorize storage requests. With Azure AD, you can use role-based access control or RBAC to grant permission to security principle, which may be a user, group, or application service principle. The security principle is authenticated by Azure AD to return an OAuth 2.0 token. Authorization with Azure AD is available for all general purpose and blob storage account in all public regions and national clouds. Built-in storage roles are provided including owner, contributor, and reader. The role can be scoped from management group to individual blob or queue. The best practices dictate granting only the narrowest possible scope, and RBAC role assignments may take up to 5 minutes to propagate. So please be aware of that. Now let's understand storage service encryption. Azure Storage provide a comprehensive set of security capabilities that together enable developers to build secure applications. Azure Storage encryption is enabled for all new and existing storage accounts and cannot be disabled. Because your data is secured by default, you don't need to modify your code or application to take advantage of Azure Storage encryption. Encryption does not affect Azure Storage performance. There is no additional cost for Azure Storage Encryption as well. You can rely on Microsoft Managed Key for the encryption for your Azure Storage account, or you can manage encryption with your own keys as well. If you choose to manage encryption with your own key, you have two options. You can specify a customer managed key to use for encrypting and decrypting all data in the storage account, or you can specify a customer provided key on blob storage operations as well. Next topic we need to understand is blob data retention policies. 
Immutable storage for Azure Blob Storage enables users to store business critical data objects in a warm, which is which is white ones, read many state. This state makes the data non-erasable and non and non-modifiable for a user specified interval. For the duration of the retention interval, blobs can be created and read, but cannot be modified or deleted. Immutable storage is available for general purpose V2 and blob storage account in all Azure regions. So let me show you how you can find that. I'm on my Azure portal. I'm going to go back to my storage account. Click on storage account and go to your blob container. So I'm going to create a container. So right on the left hand side under setting for the container, click on access policies. And within the settings, you can find immutable blob storage. And when you click on add policy, you can either find legal hold or time-based retention. So what is time-based retention? In time-based retention policy support, users can set policies to store data for a specific interval. When a time-based retention policy is set, blobs can be created and read, but not modified or deleted. So what is legal hold? Under legal hold policy support, if the retention interval is not known, users can set legal holds to store immutable data until the legal hold is cleared. When a legal hold policy is set, blobs can be created and read, but not modified or deleted. Other immutable storage features include support for all blob tiers, container level configuration and audit logging support. Now let's understand Azure Files Authentication. Azure file support identity-based authentication over server message block or SMB through on-premises Active Directory domain services and Azure Active Directory domain services as well. Azure Files enforces authorization on user access to both the share and the directory file levels as well. Share level permissions assignment can be performed on Azure Active Directory users or group managed through the role-based access control model. So what are the advantages of identity-based authentication? Identity-based authentication for Azure files offers several benefits over the shared key authentication. It extends the traditional identity-based file share access experience to the cloud with on-premises ADDS and Azure ADDS. So if you plan to lift and shift your application to the cloud, replacing traditional file servers with Azure file shares then you may want your application to authenticate with either on-premises ADDS or Azure ADDS credential to access file data. Azure file supports using both on-premises ADDS or Azure ADDS credential to access Azure file share over SMB from either on-premises ADDS or Azure ADDS domain join VMs. So let's look at an example where I can show you identity-based authentication data workflow. So the first step is before you can enable authentication on Azure file shares, you must first set up your domain environment. Second step is when an identity associated with application running on a VM attempts to access data in Azure file share, the request is sent to Azure ADDS to authenticate the identity. And the third step is if, if the authentication is successful, Azure ADDS returns a Kerberos token. And the fourth and the final step is the application sends a request that includes the Kerberos token and Azure file shares use the token to authorize the request. And the last topic is secure transfer required. You can configure your storage account to accept requests from secure connection only by setting the secure transfer required property for the storage account. When you require secure transfer, any requests originating from an insecure connections are rejected. Microsoft recommends that you always require secure transfer for all of your storage accounts. When secure transfer is required, a call to the Azure Storage REST API operation must be made over HTTPS. Any request made over HTTP is rejected. By default, the secure transfer required property is enabled when you create a storage account, Azure Storage doesn't support HTTPS for custom domain names. This option is not applied when you are using a custom domain name. So that concludes the lesson on storage security in Azure. In the next video, we're going to learn about database security. 
So I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.